found me when I couldn't see the surface and you pulled me yeah you pulled me to the shore you held me in your arms when I was broken when this world's so making sense to me I can't sleep not in this bed if you aren't in and out no I can't breathe it's killing me Hi guys, I hope you are well and for anyone new, hello, welcome back. My name is Ellis and I share lots of cleaning content over here and as you can see today, my house was feeling a little bit overwhelming. There was a lot of clutter and mess and things that just needed to be dealt with. There was a lot of stuff out of place. I'd started a million and one different tasks from sanding and staining the table and things like that. And I really wanted this video to kind of help you guys who, like me, suffer with a form of anxiety when your house is a mess that kind of really increases and also you feel like you need to tidy your home to help relieve some of the anxiety upon you. So whether you suffer from anxiety or depression, I have been diagnosed with both of those things, um, health anxiety, generalised anxiety, mild depression, OCD. I am used to those feelings, those big emotions, and I wanted to share with you guys this video today to let you know that things do get better first of all, but also share this video with you to let you know that you're not alone and that if you get your cleaning with me, it can really help relieve some of those symptoms. I know for me, cleaning is a massive relief of a lot of this stuff and having a tidy space is very much a tidy mind, as I say a lot, and just ticking off a lot of the tasks that are weighing down on my brain can really, really help me. So. As always, I'm starting off by tidying up all the work surfaces. I have an audiobook on in my ears, um, as you can probably see. And I'm going to get cracking by tidying everything up, getting things a little bit more streamlined before I start to clean. So if you're feeling anxious today, if you've got anything that's on your mind, why not clean alongside me or alternatively sit down, chill for 30 minutes or so whilst you watch this video and then get your clean on when it's time that suits you. Trying to laugh when you were the one who gave me the chance to To try to get by knowing inside I still miss you To say I'm alright but every night I still need you I want you back to, want you back to me So I also thought I would share some tips whilst we're going along in this video of things that really, really help me when I'm in this state of just feeling really, really overwhelmed by my surroundings. And sometimes I feel like I have no energy and no motivation to want to kind of get up, get cleaning, um, get things sorted. But at the same time, I know that that is the biggest element to me actually feeling the way that I do in the first place. So one of the things that I really, really encourage you to do is not overwhelm yourself with how much there is to do. 
I know firsthand that when you let this stuff build up, it can feel so overwhelming and you don't know where to begin. And I find that even just by accomplishing something, you feel a lot, lot better and sometimes even more motivated to continue going. So start small. Don't sit there and say to yourself, you're going to clean the entire house today because a lot of the times that's just not realistic. When you're dealing with symptoms and problems of anxiety and depression sometimes everything is just a bit too much you're tired you're fatigued you may have a lack of sleep no energy a lack of motivation like there's so many other things that obviously can hinder you even wanting to get up and clean and I've been there so many times so start small pick a small task whether that is literally today I'm going to pick up all of the kitchen I'm going to make sure that today I make the work surfaces so that I can see them. Don't worry about cleaning them. Just make it so that you pick up and the floor and the tidy is tidy and the work surfaces are tidy. It can be as small as that. It can be today I'm going to hoover the house. It can be today I'm going to clean one of the bathrooms. Today I'm going to go around and pick up all of the mess around the house, all of the rubbish that's been loitering. It doesn't need to be big. It just needs to get you started. And sometimes you'll have more motivation. You'll see what you've achieved and it will encourage you to keep going. And sometimes it won't. And sometimes you'll be done and we can go again another day. Now, another huge tip that I want to share with any of you guys that I have shared so many times in so many of my cleaning videos, I use it so, so much, 
And I appreciate that sometimes things don't go our way and we really do lack that motivation. So something that I've used is Mel Robbins' five second rule. And for anyone that hasn't ever heard of it, that doesn't have a clue what it is, hasn't heard me ramble on about it in the past, essentially Mel Robbins' five second rule. And if you don't know who Mel Robbins is, then I highly recommend you go and check her out. She is a very good motivational speaker. I love listening to her podcast, her YouTube episodes, like I'm obsessed and have been for many, many years. But essentially, her five second rule basically states that in five seconds, you get up and do whatever it is you are doing. And essentially, what she says is that scientifically, if you do not get up and do something within the first five seconds of thinking about needing to do it, you probably won't do it. You'll put it off, you'll procrastinate. So it is literally as simple as going, okay, today I've decided that I'm going to see my kitchen work surfaces I'm going to crack on and I'm going to do that and you give yourself five seconds so you literally count five four three two one and you get up and do what you've said you're going to do it's as simple as that it doesn't need to be any more complex and I think that that mixed in with keeping things small can really really help you Now, I think 100% we can be way too harsh on ourselves at times. Sometimes we have a list of things that we want to get done, things that we want to accomplish, and we don't actually get them done. And we can be really, really harsh on ourselves and really, really kind of give ourselves some negative talk, put ourselves down. And ultimately, to feel better about yourself, to help relieve things like anxiety and depression, we know firsthand that we need to be start being a bit kinder to ourselves. So what I don't want you to do is to put yourself down for not achieving something, for having a messy home, for not having a clean home. Don't compare yourself to others, but instead talk kinder to yourself. And I want you to write down a list, and this is something that really, really helps me, is write down a list of not the things that you haven't done, not the things that you have to do, but of the things that you have accomplished today, of all of the things that you've managed to get done. And whether that is as simple as I got up, I made my kids breakfast, I parented them, I looked after them, I took them to clubs, even that in itself is enough and is a lot. 
And I think in this day and age, we are expected to be full-time workers, full-time mothers, full-time nannies, full-time cleaners. We're expected to do all of these jobs that 50, 60, 70 years ago, we weren't expected to do. The man went to work, the wife stayed at home. That was what it was. So we had time to clean our homes all those years ago. Because what else was we doing? We was perhaps doing a food shop or we was looking after the children. But when the children went to school, we could clean the homes. When they went for a nap, we could clean the homes. Whereas again, I know firsthand that when this happens at the moment, I spend those nap times and I spend those times when the kids are at school working my backside off to provide for my kids. So don't put yourself down. Stop with the harsh negative talk and start speaking to yourself a little bit kinder. Something that I like to do each day is to think of three positives of the day. Three things I'm really, really grateful for. And I do this at the end and the beginning of the day. And it really, really does help me and my mindset. So if you haven't tried that, perhaps I would recommend trying that as well. Three things that you've accomplished today that were great. Three things that you've accomplished that you're happy with. Three things that happened that you're grateful for. A lot of this stuff can really help your mindset and help you reframe a situation. to add that for anyone that doesn't know my background um i actually qualified as a mindset and business coach many many years ago now and i absolutely loved coaching women i coached a lot of women who had a lot of negative self-talk a lot of mums in business and i absolutely loved it and i only stopped when i fell pregnant because i was pretty poorly and i couldn't commit to my clients and it's definitely something when i've got a bit more time that i would love to get back into but i trained in hypnotherapy i know how much the subconscious mind can really affect how we're feeling and something else i absolutely love to do is journaling now i have created an entire video on journaling so if you don't know what the hell i'm talking about i will leave it linked below and up the top up here so you can go ahead and have a look but journaling can really really help with your mindset i use a lot of different types of journaling sometimes i use question format journaling whereby there are questions that are asked and i answer the questions and what's on my heart other days i use journaling like a diary and i brain dump out my feelings and emotions and sometimes i find that my subconscious brain writes stuff down on the paper and it just kind of flows and it just kind of comes out pen to paper. And before I even know what I'm writing, it kind of gives me so much clarity. So I would highly recommend looking at that video because I absolutely love journaling as a form of self-help. And I've also been through many, many, many CBT sessions. So whilst I am not personally advising you in terms of what you should be doing for your own situation, and I would always recommend getting help if you haven't already because a therapist a counsellor that can really help you and your circumstances I can speak from experience that these things these techniques these methods have really really helped me with my anxiety and keeping a clean home and not letting it bog me down too much to really lower my mood
Golly gosh, was this one of the rooms that I had put off cleaning for I can't tell you how long. The boys, this is primarily the boys' bathroom, all of them. They all bath in here, they brush their teeth in here, they get ready in here. I own the ensuite. This is their bathroom, but by gosh, was it a state? Their toothpaste goes everywhere. I mean, come on, boys. Like, why is there a hairbrush in the sink? I mean, really. And it doesn't matter how many times I tell them tidy up after yourself put the lip back on the toothpaste wash the spit out of the sink put the toilet roll back like they just don't listen now i don't know whether this is a boy thing because i look at so many other people's homes and think oh my gosh i don't see your house looking this messy and i've grown up teaching my kids this so it's not even like one day i've just decided to throw these rules upon them like they know this but this bathroom needed to be tackled as you can see there that was actually a bottle of body wash that they'd filled up with water i mean what these kids do in this bathroom i have no clue but this bathroom was really 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 getting me down now it's actually at the end of the hallway so i don't need to see it i never really go around this way other than to go into one of the boys bedrooms so it really kind of is a out of sight out of mind however this is the one bathroom that owns a bath and one thing that i really wanted to share with you guys is that self-care can really 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 help your mood now i think i shared recently in a video that i have actually been doing a lot of reading it has been massively helping me take some time away take some time for myself and what i found is that i'm not actually losing time out of my day or taking time away from being with my children what I'm actually doing is stopping the Instagram scroll and that in itself is hugely benefiting me and my mindset and my mood by not being on social media but it's also giving me that little area of escapism by being able to read a book and get out of my own head but even better than that is reading a book in the bath and I love baths and this is why I'm bringing this up because this bathroom was a state it's the one place that has a bathroom there is no way in hell I can relax in a bathroom that looks like this. So for me, this was on one of the things that was at the top of my list to get it clean so that I could give my little set myself that little bit of self-care that evening. And I really, again, recommend that those sorts of places that you like to relax in, make those your areas that you prioritise cleaning. If you like to sit in your kitchen, make your kitchen the tidy area of your home if you spend a lot of time in your lounge or your living room do that i also love a tidy bedroom like i love waking up and going to sleep and that is another huge thing is being able to relax and switch off an evening in a room that is tidy is huge so i would always recommend going around and picking up your room even if it's before you go to bed and i mean there's not really much mess that can happen then before bed and you waking up in the morning but really going around and tidying up that and again if it's not clean it's not clean but being tidy and clean are very different things and being tidy can have a massive impact on your mental health
so I also feel like I've kind of gotten to a point in my life where I am done with the mess and the clutter. Now I feel like it's it was very in many years ago to fill your home with small trinkets and things like that. However, what that actually enabled a lot of us to do was actually build up a lot of stuff. I feel like I changed a lot of my decor according to the season. So I have boxes and boxes of different seasonal decor. I feel like I had a lot of different Christmas decorations and I feel like I had so many different types of trinkets and flowers. And when I replaced them, what I really struggled to do was to actually let go. So I'd just find a new home for something else. And in turn, what this has done is left me with a home that granted, I absolutely love. However, it's full of things. And these things have to be cleaned. These things have to be tidied away. Likewise, the boys have been very lucky. We have a very big family. Over the years, being three boys, they've been spoiled with gifts at Christmas and birthdays and on occasions and things like that. However, a lot of that has made its way into our home. And in turn, a lot of the time the boys don't know what they have, they can't see what they have, they can't tidy it up very well, they can't organise it very well, there's not a place or a home for everything anymore as there once used to be. Now this is the same with my clothes, with the kids clothes, like obviously having three boys, I've kept a lot of their stuff, I've handed it down over the years but my clothes i have some items of clothing that are well over 13 years old like i've had them since before i even met adam and at that point i was like 17 like why am i still holding on to these items of clothing so recently i have been going through a huge declutter of my house and again I'm taking it step by step. I'm not overwhelming myself, but I've been putting my clothes on vintage. I've been going through the kids' clothes. I'm going to be slowly making piles of those and adding them to vintage. I've been putting things down the tip. I've been selling stuff on the marketplace. I've been gifting stuff to charity shops. I've been doing tip runs. And I can't tell you how much this is helping my mental health in doing so. Like It is really, really amazing what decluttering and making your home and making everything in your home have a home can do for your own mental health. And so again, this is something that has really, really helped me. And if it's not something that you've done, I know that again, a lot of the time, and not always, because this is very like not a thing that everyone does. But if you suffer with anxiety, if you suffer with depression, you can sometimes have a house full of things. And sometimes things aren't what matter. I have recently gotten into the mood whereby I would much rather gain time back with my children and spending time with them than spending the time cleaning and tidying things and putting away washing and things like that and trying to find a home for things and wasting so much time doing all of those things. Whereby if my house was more decluttered, I would get to spend more time with my children, which in turn would make me happier. So that is something that I'm definitely working on, something that I'll continue to share with you guys over here on YouTube. But it is something that, again, I would recommend if you haven't done. When you have a moment and you have a moment of being able to be up for it, start small. Again, I just started with grabbing 10 items out of my wardrobe, taking photos of them popping them back in a different section of my wardrobe and then later on that evening putting them up online it doesn't have to be a big overwhelming task so just starting small and getting these things done can really help vine. we are the branches i can do nothing apart from you the giver of life You're my lifeline. Uh, yeah. 
Well guys, I hope some of these tips that I have shared with you today may actually help you if you are a fellow sufferer with anxiety or depression or any other sort of mental health issue or somebody that maybe just suffers physically to get up and get things done. Maybe you lack motivation, maybe you are somebody that is really uninspired, maybe you just despise cleaning or you're tired but I really hope that this does help you get up, get a clean on, get things tidied and inspire you in some way. If it does, then I would love for you to leave me a comment in the comments box below, letting me know you've watched, letting me know it's helped. If you're a new subscriber, then I would love for you to say, hey, I love engaging with you guys on my videos and I would love for you guys to say, hey, I love to know if you enjoy this content, what's working, what sort of content you'd like from me, what you're going through, how your cleaning's been, things that might help. So do come and say, hey, if you aren't an existing subscriber, then I would love to have you over here. So do subscribe, do give this video a big thumbs up, but I'm gonna leave you with a very tidy bathroom and I hope this has helped you and I will see you all in another cleaning video again very, very soon. Bye guys. In you I live, in you I give. In you I love and can't forgive. In you I swear.